Where are they now? I don't know. And do you really care? Uh, that's not a good question to ask me right about now, because you might not like the answer. Welcome to Cliff Alerts. Today we're going to be talking about Lifetime Network's reality-based TV series, Married at First Sight, season number 15, the Where Are They Now episode. The program begins with uh, Lindy and Miguel taking some photographs on the beach. And um, they had a certain picture with the waves coming up behind them that was really glorious. Yeah. Thought it was really cool. Love the waves behind them. And then Lindy starts pressing Miguel about purchasing a house. Pull up, sis. Because she thinks Miguel's place is too small. It's been there about what, two, three months now? And she believes that, you know, they need a bigger space. Why are you buying a house with Lindy's school debt? And if Lindy has school debt, then that mortgage is going to be... Impacted. That's going to be Miguel's responsibility. Mm -hmm. And buying a house in San Diego, most homes, even an average house start off really high. Lindy is not here when Miguel says, well, this is a whole lot. Um, I'm not there yet. And, um, you know, you take the lead and they, they drag us along with them looking at a four bedroom, uh, two bath house. So you think she's caught up in the ideal of being wifey and that they're a team now and, and what that looks like in her mind. Lindy yeah. has school debt. And the first thing we know about Miguel is when his sister told the audience that he was financially responsible. Yep, yep. And uh, he just strikes me as uh, right in line with that. Yeah, right in line with and that. Not what? making moves, you know, um, off the cuff simply because of... You know a feeling right but now. another thing we learned about miguel from his past relationships the woman rode rough shot over him mm -hmm. and he in some instances he was able unable to say no well so i just think the whole thing is get that debt down um lindy get some sort of full-time situation going on and they can you know then move towards that translation they need to, from your vantage point, be a little bit more stable before they decide to make a move like a four-bedroom, two-bath house. Well, I don't really care what size house it is, but I know um, houses in San Diego is going to be pricey. Mm -hmm. Finance destroy marriages once people are not on the same page. Yeah, it definitely doesn't seem like uh, Miguel is altogether too enthusiastic uh, based on his reactions and some of the things that his body language you know, may have seemed to suggest to me, a viewer. I know debts can can wreak havoc, so I would hope that they'll try to avoid that as much as they can. I think Miguel's on board with your sentiment, but uh, not necessarily Lindy. Stasia and Nate. Now, this couple to me um, is a little, like, strange. Stasia <laughs> seems she wants everything f out of Nate. And for any marriage to work, you won't be able to extract everything you want out of your husband. She needs either a pet or some good friends <laughs> or a hobby because he can't be her everything. Well, I think that uh, maybe she has this notion in her head that that's what husbands are supposed to be. So maybe the reality of the situation uh, may be kicking in right about now to where it is that you know, Nate is going to do the best that he can, where he is, what he's got to be, all that she needs, but that won't be everything. I don't expect you to be all of that for me. Exactly. And I know I can't be all of that for you. Exactly. I can be what I am, and hopefully that's a, that's good enough. Right. You know, or close enough to, you know, what you imagine or expect so that, you know, so that things are smooth from there, or as close to being smooth as possible. But one of the things that I think... Uh, Stasi is doing is, is that I wouldn't advise her to do is treating her marriage as though it were a business relationship. Right, the man is not um, her employee. Right, exactly. And He's the what, husband. Right, and I think she's um, still got a little bit of that left in her. I think at the beginning of this experience, I think there was a lot more of that in her than there is now, but well, I think that she's still got enough left to, to cause maybe some issues moving forward and that she needs to uh, kind of really pull that all the way back because well, Nate is like you said Nate is not her employee 
and Nate is not even her business partner. I know they want to be power couple and all that, but it takes time to get there, and they've got a whole lot of ground to cover before they even get there from my vantage point. Well, I see Stasia's point of view. When mm -hmm. you're out there and you're working and you're just grinding, mm -hmm. you get accustomed to doing stuff your own way, and people got to show up the way you want them to show up, or, or you just go on to the next and best situation. Yeah, but she's not single but anymore. But she's not single anymore. Right. And while they participated in an activated or, or, or extremely accelerated um, marriage at first sight. Process, right. She mm -hmm. got to realize that one, now that the cameras are off, she needs to relax because they have to almost like go back to being single again mm -hmm. while they form a marriage together. Yeah, and she had an opportunity to meet with her mother, Stacy, and basically, from my from my understanding, that's what um, mom told her. Yeah. To pull and up. And that everyone is not where she is. Right, and that's okay. And it's okay. Well, so Hopefully, I'm, I'm, she uh, that sunk, that message coming from Stacy sunk into daughter, and she'll be able to proactively utilize that advice so as not to, uh, in, at least in appearance, if not in reality, push the very thing that she wants away from her, i.e. Right. her husband and i.e. that marital relationship. And they got to stop running. He, he, he got to stand up when they have an argument. Couples have arguments all the time. It's not the end of the world. But he got to stand, be focused and stand his ground and say, hey, I'm here. Um, you tell me whatever you tell me I'm not going anywhere and say that over and over again until she believes him because she is so exacting and I know that's like because I was exacting as well mm -hmm. and I had to change the way I was moving because it was impacting our relationship right so you, you just gotta relax gotta relax get some good girlfriends get a pet get get a hobby just learn how to breathe and relax. I agree with that because, you know, that that notion to be exacting, you know, most of the time, if, if not all of the time, has just the opposite effect of what you might intend it to have. Uh, it may be where she expects that to pull them closer together in some way, shape, or form, but it does just the opposite. It pushes people away because people are just not like that in reality people don't operate like that in reality. she wants it the way she wants it and she doesn't realize that the way she wants it may not work for the other person and so they you, not, got, and you they gotta not, find common ground and they might not even be capable of uh of describing to that level right know? right nate nate did um because they had an upset where they they were separated for a minute a right? week yeah something like that and then when they got back together you know he made it clear based on not only what he was able to convey, you know, out of his mouth in terms of the sentiments, uh, his sentiment, but also show an action that, hey, look, I'm here. I want us to make it together. You know, I'm, you know, willing to put in the work. He said, I'm here is. now. I choose to be here. Right. And that's a conscious decision that he made to say, hey, look, I'm not going anywhere. So we move on to Justin meeting Mitch in the park and Mitch is cleaning up um the the park because you know some people are trifling environmental they, activity they go to the park and they leave their trash and people have to do that to keep it uh, uh, clean right. they are talking and uh justin um is still in the the mindset that nate hit on him he repeated that mess while mitch is being philosophical talking about how he showed up on camera and he said uh, at the reunion oh he got a clue now he huh? he he stayed on the high ground and uh that he was no longer living by himself he moved in with one of his buddies and that confused me because this show elevated all of them why is he living why is a 41 year old living with another dude uh, don't ask me do you, I, do you do you understand what i'm saying i don't want to know why i don't have a clue why i don't have an explanation or an earthly idea why well he i'm, I'm glad that. he's out of the filthy apartment i just hope that <laughs> i that hope that tendency it, doesn't carry over to his buddy's place because i mean people will put you out put quick fast and in a hurry if you, if you're nasty <laughs> i'm just saying <laughs> Can't roll like that. Uh, no, you know, no, no. There can be some dudes have that tendency to begin with in their single life, but you can't. You know, as you get older, you can't 
can't, I can't really no. do that and, and think it's going to work for other people, man. It's called a broom and Lysol and time. <laughs> It'll work itself out. Alexis and Kristen are developing their relationship further. They're happy that they're no longer married. Mm -hmm. Kristen said that she she doesn't want to date, mm -hmm. and uh, Alexis said she don't, she's glad she's not with a dude who goes from zero to one hundred. Mm -hmm. Couple of sentences down, uh, Kristen said that she she's gonna open herself up to dating. And I huh? think for do these two ladies, they should invest time in themselves. But to find value in learning who they are and aware of what is good for them and what is not good for yeah, them. Yeah, Kristen also um, revealed that she's going to be taking a, a bite out of the Big Apple and, and that she's relocated to the NYC. And that would be the perfect time that I would guess or imagine to do exactly what you said, you know, you think she needs to do and to kind of hit the reset button, focus on herself and, and go about, you know, learning and loving herself and being comfortable being by herself and not being as, as thirsty as you. you I, I, I'm not sure why women are, some women are afraid to be by themselves. You learn so much glorious things about yourself. Get quiet time, you quiet your mind mm -hmm. so you're able to really think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think that that would be time well spent for not only uh, Kristen, who's, uh, again, relocated in NYC, but also Alexis as well. I think this experience with Justin was something that uh, was a, a little bit traumatic for her. And, yeah. And I think that she uh, definitely, uh, I guess, moved a little bit away from where she is as a person to kind of... Uh, make the relationship work as best she could well uh the problem with that from from my point of view is they had a date they then after saying they're not dating they had a blind date they went on a blind date together with greg and matt greg is putting the best foot forward and saying what she wants to hear and you could see uh lexus already giving the man googly eyes mm -hmm. why he he's just he's just saying standard stuff. Oh my god! Right, it was a bit much. I was man. cringing, yeah. and then Kristen Matt is sitting there. He seemed like a cool guy. Mm -hmm. He's not saying a whole lot mm -hmm. because cameras are around him, yeah, he's and he's just meeting them for the first yeah. time. He's not accustomed to being in that in that kind of setting. I, it seemed like he was a little uncomfortable. At the he, very least, he looked that. uncomfortable. Have to get his way through the and situation. then she said, "Why does he he needs to give her more? How much more she thinks he needs to give?" Yeah, and then it's the, weird. Their, their conversation kind of took a strange turn from my end, uh, from my vantage point. You know, they started talking about hy marriage. yeah hypotheticals and all that kind of stuff. There would be a lot to really consider as to why those guys showed up on camera the way that they did, and it would be. And why did they go on a double date? Right, and why it they would even manufactured agree. and forced right. and seem authentic right. or genuine? Right. Well, I just think coming out of the the marital experience that both of those ladies had, it was uh, something that should not have been part of the conversation. Anything as it relates to you know being married. Ben and Morgan are uh, uh, hooked up. Reconnected. Reconnected. Yeah. And uh, they went Tybo to the gym. The gym. To play Work Tybo. it out. And you could see. Um, uh, ben, when he saw him, started covering his stuff. Yeah, he was protecting the cashews because he wasn't sure <laughs> necessarily that Morgan's uh, uh, is fully recovered from that experience. She made where me she, an she may, flashback. Yeah, the, yeah, she may be a little salty about the situation still, and so he didn't want he didn't want to risk you know exposing the cashews. As but a they seem like they had fun and good for them. Morgan said she'll be traveling mm -hmm. and uh, overseas, ben, right? Right, mm, and Ben is focusing on himself yeah yeah so ben's doing what i think um alexis, alexis and, and kristen need to do alexis and justin, and justin right. in the park and this oh whole boy. scene oh boy this whole scene seemed to be um an effort for justin to get back at alexis so they had a rough cut them in the park and then all of a sudden he um you know he said Oh, you told the world that I was yada, 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 but you never went into the reason. And the reason why I was is because your pH balance was off. 
That's a trifling. And then he smirked. That's a trifling ass thing for for him to say about not only his ex wife but also on camera. But he uh, to me he tried to do do that to make himself look good. Just like the foul. Nate, it it just like the Nate situation. Right. He but foul. if that was supposed to correct what right. Alexis said, it made him look his, his standing I guess that as a man look even worse. Right. He had been thinking in his right mind from my vantage point. He would have said he would have been able to listen to what Alexis had to say. He would have responded, you know, and tactfully to it. Okay, he, if he had some issues with what uh, Alexis did on that after after party show and some of the things she may have revealed and some of the ways that she kind of portrayed him, then he could have said said that and said, "Hey, look, I didn't like that. Um, it wasn't right." Well, the word says love covers a multitude of sins. Right. So I guess these people weren't prepared to cover each other. Right, and he was like, it was just, it was just all kinds of raggedy ass wrong. He was vindictive. Right, and what, a man like that, you got any, a woman needs to stay. Far yeah, why away would from. he do something like that? Would he want somebody to treat his sisters or nieces or aunties? And that then way? he smirked the way he smirked, right. like, okay, I got that on camera. Right, right, I got it on camera. So you know that that some in some way uh, some way restores my my credibility or my reputation. Yeah, and his representative made him look uh, like a complete asshole on TV. Well, we now get to Kristen's party. Everyone's in the kitchen, and Justin comes through with and, Maya, right? Right. With the energy got sucked out of the room. He probably felt it. And the entire um, weekend, Bye. he stayed by himself. Justin is not full grown, and um, it is what it is. Come on, bro. Any, anyway, um, Nate agreed with Stasia that he should just avoid Justin at this get-together. Yeah, he didn't go looking for a confrontation. He went to say goodbye to the rest of the group, which they have, you know, I guess some uh, have built some kind of com camaraderie right. with. You know, they're sitting, and you could see that uh, Justin is uncomfortable. And later on in at night when they're drinking and partying, uh, Alexis goes to him and says, I want to speak to you. Goes to Justin, yeah. And I'm like, and, uh -oh, I, I, here and I'm wondering why. Yeah. She apologized for what she said, yada, yada, yada. But he didn't accept it. He, he, well, he told was cold, her he uh, well, hard he said, in his, his response. He and, said and he was drunk. Justin goes and taps Nate and said he wanted to have a conversation with him. And the rest of the group looked nervous because they don't know if anything going to yeah. be popping off. Right, they're going to get the rumbling in the next room. <laughs> so uh, Justin and Nate sits down and Justin immediately said that he apologized to Nate for what he said. Um, that he was under pressure. And Nate said, well, yeah, I understand that, but why would you say that about me? That you TV? knew wasn't that true. That you knew was not true. And that, but he did at least apologize. And Nate did the, the, the decent thing. He They tapped each other. Dapped each other dapped up. Dapped each other Yeah, up. And, and, you know, kind of hugged it out, you know, after the, after Justin, you know, but, did what he should have done a while ago. But clearly he should not forget that. No, he, I don't think Nate will. Then he just then goes back into the room and he makes an effort to apologize to everyone who he had ought against. He called out Kristen, apologized to Stasia, mm -hmm. I believe Morgan as well. Okay. Uh, okay, he Ben. He, right, and but he, the one person he forgot was Alexis. Conveniently and, left out. And as a result, she said the apology was fake. It was not sincere. And Mitch brought Kristen a gift. Mm -hmm. And she got so emotional, the card, she wanted him to read it. Yeah. And it had some nice things about her in the card. Mm -hmm. And she started getting emotional and crying. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he had to hug her. And then mm -hmm. she says, um, I, out to the camera, she wondered if she should have left the door open. What? 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 That's why I said this woman needs a relationship with herself. Mitch has closed the door. Mitch has moved on. He was not attracted to you, and that's his choice. And he has moved on. What what door open is she leaving for Mitch? An, an imaginary one. That's why these men are able to get access to her life and walk all over her, because she's 
She's not thinking this stuff through. Lindy told her it needs to be closed, dead bolted, double locked, padlocked, you know, common, whatever. Uh, uh, the, it should have been. It should be a wrap. And the it man dragged you on television, right. and because he brings a card, right. and you read and it, and a fanny pack is a gift, right? <laughs> Mitch was not sincere in his in his intent from the beginning. And he now, used he, her. How long are you gonna let this process go until you stop? You say, self. This is not working out for me. I need to stop. In order to deflect from the criticism and the smoke that was coming at Mitch, he says, well, he's philosophical about, you know, the mistakes that he made and how, and he gave her credit, uh, you know, about all the things that she helped uh, him see about himself and all, all that. Well, that to me, that's a move to deflect from the criticism and the smoke that he was getting because he knew he was acting like a, a, a Mitch. But I did not appreciate him um, knowing that from the gate and still uh, taking this woman on an emotional Listen. trip that did not go anywhere and he knew that she was catching feelings for him. Listen, listen. I'm not sure how that's going to work out. So that's all we have for today. We thank you for liking, sharing. Please subscribe to this channel and we wish you well. I have a uh, allergic reaction to something. You alright? Hmm? Okay. So. Okay. Maybe it's this show. <laughs> if that's the case, it's totally understandable. <laughs> I'll sneeze my ass right on off the side here.